So in this video lesson, I'm going to talk about the difference between dip buying a stock that's in an uptrend and trying to find the reversal of a downtrend. Trust me, it may sound the same, but they're two very different techniques and they require very different type of mindsets and, and overall planning around them. So I know you guys are going to like this one. Make sure you stick through the end. Hope you guys enjoy. So the main stock I'm going to use as an example today is uh, TRNX because this is actually one that I traded uh, trying to find that bottom reversal and ultimately I got stopped out just for it to you know squeeze back up to essentially what I expected it to do. So if you guys have not watched my other videos, you know that I am a huge proponent of buying dips in an uptrend. I like to name the pattern or the strategy buying previous resistance as current support but there's a very important distinction to be made between dip buying an uptrend and trying to find the bottom reversal in something like trnx so really the main thing is that overall you have to understand when a stock is in the downtrend overall it'll keep breaking lower lows until it gets this kind of the fake breakdown just like how on stocks when they're uptrending for example we can look at trnx here when it spiked up in the morning just like how when stocks um have a top the way the top usually tends to be is when you have kind of a fake breakout where everyone thinks oh my gosh it's breaking out again there's no way I'm, I have to buy in because I don't want to miss out on this next breakout. Everyone gets super emotional about it. And at that certain point when everyone's super emotionally driven to get into the play, that's when it ends up being the top. Everyone who chases this, this top, they panic out into the flush. So apologize for my husky making noises in the background. Um, she's being talkative today. Uh, so that kind of idea is really what you have to wait for when you're looking at these bottom reversals so when you're trying to find these bottom re uh, reversals it's not enough just to be dip buying this support because no matter what when the stock is in a downtrend what's it going to do yes it's going to test those levels of support and yes it may bounce off of them a little bit but overall as long as you're in a downtrend the stock will continue to break new lows. I can just draw right here real quick. Say we have all these different levels of support just randomly spaced out, right? And uh, let's just say that if we're in a downtrend, it would look something like this, where overall it is going to bounce off those lines, but overall it downtrends. See that? How whenever it bounces off the level of support, it holds the previous level of support as resistance. So just like how when we're looking at uptrends and I like to buy the previous resistance as support, like for example, if we had something like this, where we have this huge spike here, it pulls back, it breaks out and then dips here. I like to buy this dip, that previous resistance holding as new support right there, right? Just like how that happens in an uptrend, in a downtrend also, the previous level of support will hold as resistance. And this will stay true up until there is that point where you have that last fake breakdown and then it picks right back up and then holds overall support and then bounces higher. So I can go back into the example of TRNX and kind of just talk about, you know, where I traded it and and just break down you know why I lost on this trade um, I was trying to play the dip buy off of this overall support that I saw here kind of in the 83 uh, area we see there's many times in the day where um, it kind of bounced off that line and also um, just by looking at it here <coughs> it was a very nice double bottom off that area so that's why that's like it chose to get in 
and my stop was underneath 80 cents. So I was risking about three and a half cents a share or so to make about uh, 15, 20 cents a share. It was a very good plan, but the main thing I didn't wait for was that big snap down. That's the big panic sell when everyone thinks, holy crap, it's actually breaking underneath this support too. It's going to keep tanking. I have to get out. That's what happened to me. I'll be honest. I got trapped in this stock. I sold out. I kind of like wasn't a panic sell, but once I hit my risk, I was thinking, okay, maybe it can hold 80 cents. And then when I see it eventually break 80 cents, I'm like, okay, I don't want to hold any longer. I'm wrong. Let me get out. Um, it's all just a matter of being in too early. And if you have the mindset of of uh, when you're playing a like a bottom re a reversal, it's not enough just to be holding a critical level of support. You have to wait until the downtrend is finished. And on TRNX, we can see what happened is that it cracked that 83 and a half area. It cracked straight through 82. It didn't even bother to test there. And then it kind of went underneath 80 cents for a tiny bit. I didn't sell into this drop because I was waiting to see, okay, maybe that's the fake breakdown there. And then it will bounce up and, you know, trend higher. Um, but we can see eventually we had another big red candle that just looked like a huge panic. And at that point, when you see that, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this thing obviously cannot hold any support. There's no reason for me to get into this play. So I sold out and then it just catches support right there, recovers, and then holds ultimately back over that 80 cent line. You, If you want to play these bottom reversals, you have to wait until you see some action like this. It's not enough just to look for the support. I really recommend that if you're going to play that bottom a reversal, you really need to wait until you see that true sign of, of a reversal. Bouncing off support isn't enough. And you can see eventually uh, it got a ton of what seems like institutional buying volume and then it just squeezed out into the one dollar um so you know it sucks that i missed out on that move um ultimately what i need to do and what i really need to focus on with stuff like this is just understanding it's not enough just to be holding support you need to have that overall reversal because like i said as long as that stock's in a downtrend Yes, it's going to bounce off the levels, but ultimately, because it's in a downtrend, it's going to break lower. So you have to look for that time when the signs of the downtrend are broken. It goes into consolidation, and then ultimately, it goes back up into an uptrend. All right? So that's just a quick lesson for you guys. Um, just recapping my overall loss today on, on, uh, on TRNX and just kind of helping myself just kind of learn this type of reversal play more because like for me personally, I'm, I'm really good at just playing the first green day of stocks with news, just finding those dip buys in the uptrend because overall when you're in an uptrend, the trend will just take you away and all it really takes for you is to identify those pullbacks to get into to ride the trend. But when you're looking for a reversal, you need to really see signs of it no longer breaking down. And like I said, bouncing off support isn't enough. So hopefully that helps you guys out with your trades. Hopefully it saves you a few dollars. Um, and really what I would, like, would recommend for any new trader is that if you see any stock, uh, you know, having this huge morning push into the pre-market resistance, it holds that resistance and then breaks underneath VWAP, just leave it alone. This is called the all day fade pattern. Um, and really it's just, it's going to be a very hard time to play this stock. So just focus on those green stocks, focus on the stocks with volume and momentum and, and ultimately focus on those stocks that are holding that previous resistance as support. All right. So let me know if you guys, uh, see value in this information in the comment section below. And also let me know, um, what type of success you have with these these bottom reversals and if you have any tips on on you know how you could play these better please uh leave them down below all right i'll see you guys later
Hey, I'm assuming that if you stuck around this late, you must have really enjoyed the content in this video. Well, I'm not done giving you free content. I have an amazing bundle of trading information that I've made over the years. So let's just break it down right now. So first off, it's my ebook, How to Day Trade Every Single Morning. This is the routine that I repeat every single day to find the best stocks to trade. Um, I have the most, uh, the 10 most profitable trade setups of 2019. This is a, a list of the 10 best setups that I've found and the traders in TradeBuddy have found as well. And then last but not least, my personal trading checklist. So this is what I use every single day to plan all of my trades, plan my entries, plan my exits and everything in between. So I'm giving away all of this plus a live workshop with me breaking down everything about trading risk management, capital management and trader psychology. So you can get all of this for free if you click the link down below that says trading bundle. Sorry about that. Click the link that says trading bundle and you can get registered for the free workshop and get all of this content. All right. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button to become a part of the Trade Buddy family and hope to see you guys in the next video. All right. Thank you so much.